One of the biggest things that people struggle with is that they don't know themselves. They don't know the part of them that's actually running the show, the thing called the unconscious. I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek of one of the videos inside of my eight week program, Keys to the Kingdom, that launches in two and a half weeks, just so you can have a better insight into what actually goes on behind the scenes when it comes to your values, beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Keep your eyes out, this video is going to enlighten you the way that our mind works. Some of you guys might have seen this model before, for others it's going to be brand new. I'm going to explain the way that our brain works and our mind works the best way that I can. We're going to take it step by step because at first glance this is a pretty confusing model but I'm going to bring you step by step through to be able to understand it in a very simple way. The first thing that we're going to start with is our brain has these things called brain waves and there's five different types. The main thing that I want you to remember is that from zero to seven years old is where majority of everything that goes on inside of here is solidified into who you are. The reason for that is from zero to seven years old, you are a sponge. So think about a perfect brand new sponge that's come into this world and it gets dunked into a dirty sink water. Everything that is inside of that sink is going to get absorbed into the sponge. And that's what happens for the first seven years of your life. The reason for that is from zero to seven years old, our brain operates between delta and theta brain waves. So delta brain waves is what happen when you're in the deep realms of sleep. Theta brain waves are what happen when you are waking up from sleep. You know, when your eyes are closed and you're aware that you're awake, but you're not really awake, you're kind of asleep, but it's called this twilight state. In that state there where your eyes are closed and you're aware of everything, you're in theta brain waves. It's also the access to the subconscious mind. Keep in mind for that later when we start going into the realm of meditation and hypnosis. So because zero to seven years old, we are in this delta and theta brain waves, you are extremely impressionable and you're extremely susceptible for suggestions. When you are zero to seven, majority of your worldview is formed in that time because you're a sponge that's soaking up everything. So if you're like me and you've had a pretty rough upbringing with violence and alcoholism and all these sorts of things that have happened, that things that are getting stuck into your unconscious mind, to your subconscious, are getting stored because of that realm there. You can do a hell of a lot to be able to reprogram that. That's what we'll get up to when we start talking about hypnosis, meditation, repetition, subconscious mind, and stuff like that. I wanna give you guys a bit of an overview in this video before we dive heavily into that so that I can teach you guys how to make rapid change just like that. From seven to 14 years old, you're operating between theta and alpha states. Alpha is a little bit more coherent, it's a lot more suggestible, yes, at the same time, it's where you get shit done, it's where you do a lot of learning. When you're in alpha state, think of it like you're in that flow state. Everything's aligned, you're moving really well, it's where you're uh, practicing the things that you've done repetitiously over and over. So think sport, think school, these sorts of things. And then 14 years above, it's where you get access into beta brain waves. Beta brain waves are what you and I are operating in right now, unless you've done something to be able to calm yourself down. Beta brain waves are very good for problem solving, very good for high abstraction and getting through chaos. They're not great for living a harmonious and peaceful life, being present. They keep you pretty distracted, pretty fragmented and anxious as well. I want you guys to understand that this model here, these brain waves here, you have access to whenever you want to. When you go to sleep, you're releasing delta brain waves. When you're waking up, you're going into theta, into alpha, and then through the different ranges of beta brain waves. There's one above, which is called gamma. Gamma is a very special place. It's where mystical experiences happen. It's where you become very visionary when you're doing like meditation, hypnosis, plant medicine ceremonies, and stuff like that. You're really cooking when that happens, but that's a whole other video inside of itself. It's one of my biggest passions, but we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, everything that happens inside of this model, you'll be able to understand because of these here. Knowing that from zero to seven years old, this is how this is formed. The way our mind works is everything that comes from our perception, our perception is the five senses. So everything that we see, everything we hear, touch, smell, and taste. What goes on with the five senses we perceive, it goes in, filters through, and deletes, distorts, and generalizes. The, have you ever thought of someone's name and you don't know where they, where they sit in your mind, and you re-meet that person, you go, is their name John? Is their name Peter? Is it Steve? Ah, oh, g'day, how you doing, mate? Yeah, it's Alan. Shit, I don't even remember how I met you. That happens because we either deleted a piece of information, we distorted it, or we've generalized it as archetype of man. Man reminds me of Peter, Peter's his name. But it has nothing to do with that because it didn't, 
this is going to sound a bit dickish, uh, that person didn't matter to you enough to be able to store their name properly in your mind because of these three things here. And the reason why these three things here to sort of generalize is every moment, every second, your conscious mind can take in between five and seven bits of information, plus or minus two, depending on who you are and how much of this anxiety rectangle has stolen your attention. Perfect example here, without thinking, without saying um or ah, I want you to list a name of specific things. I want you to tell me in the comments down below how many you got to before you thought consciously. And the thing I'm gonna get you to list without saying um or ah in the first second, as fast as you can, is car brands go. How many did you get to? So there was a couple of seconds there. How many did you get to when I said car brands? So you might say things like Holden, Hyundai, Toyota, Subaru, Mazda, I got five. There we go, that was five. So that's what your conscious mind can do. Latest neuroscience is showing that what your unconscious can do through all of this stuff here, your unconscious can process 16 million, some studies are saying 32 million bits of information every single second. So think of it this way. You've got a box of matches. A box of matches roughly has, depending on the size of the box, roughly has about 100 matches inside of it. You're picking up 1,600 of those every single second and you're keeping track of every single one. Are you doing that consciously or are you doing that unconsciously? And that's what our mind has the capabilities of storing, but it does through deleting, distorting, and generalizing. So after you've had a perception, something's come in through the five senses, it's been taken through your filters, deleted, distorted, generalized, it's then taken through your values, your belief systems, any decisions that you've ever, ever made, your paradigms and patterns of behavior that you've done before. Everything happens in such a snap second that majority of the time, if you're unconscious and you're not aware of these things, you will not be able to change and stop the reaction that happens. There's something that I want you to consider. In between whatever event that happens through your five senses that you perceive, there is a moment for you to be able to pause deliberately, consciously, and then choose response. We're not going to act unconsciously from our value, belief, decision, paradigms, and patterns anymore. Because now that you've known this, and it's now lo no longer unconscious, the moment it becomes conscious and in this light, it no longer wants to be there. It wants to return back to the subconscious, to the unconscious, and it wants to form a new identity. It wants to form a different, uh, a different pattern. The unconscious doesn't like to be seen. The unconscious likes to stay dormant and behind the scenes so that you're just moseying about doing life. The moment you bring attention to it, it'll transform. And that's what we're doing here. So we've gone perception, delete disorder to generalize. We're going through your values, beliefs, so on and so forth. What happens in an instant second? It is combined with an internal picture. So an internal representation, that's either a bunch of words that you might see, uh, it might be sounds, it might be taste, smells, whatever it is, but that it has a picture or something very similar or a movie inside of your head that you can bring these things called submodalities to. Very technical way of saying, forms a picture in your head. When I say, think of a coffee mug, in your mind right now, you have a representation of coffee mug. When I say waterfall, you have an image in your mind of waterfall. When I say beach, you have an image in your mind when I say beach. That is a specific internal representation to you. You can change that internal representation, but that's another video as well. What happens when you get a combined internal representation, it elicits a state and a state is just an emotion. So it could be happiness, sadness, guilt, shame, resentment, whatever it is. And then it is coupled with physiology. So when you get angry, what tends to happen with the physiology when you get angry? You start to talk through your teeth, you tighten your jaw up, you start to get very tense and your posture becomes bigger. You start breathing from your upper chest to be able to inflate, to intimidate. And then your gaze becomes very, very foveal. You're very perceptive of staring down the barrel. What happens when you become love? When you feel love, you feel joy. Oh, the posture softens. You start to talk a little bit airy-fairy. There's more air that comes out of the breath when you talk. That's the state that's going on. And you can change the state any single time that you choose to. A state change can be as simple as going, well, I'm gonna change my physiology. I'm going to change my state, internal representation system. Now I'm doing the physiology of someone who's depressed. Think of it for yourself. How does someone who's doing depression, how do they act? Their shoulders slump. They avert their gaze, they might look out the corner of their eye. Their speech is usually pretty slow. 
There's lots of audible sighing because they feel the pressure of their nervous system. And now, in this depressed state, I feel like crap. I don't like how I feel. I don't even want to look at the camera to continue recording this. So how would I get myself out of this? I would basically change my state. And the way that I change my state is I change my posture. And instantly, I've got goosebumps running down my neck, my back, my arms, and I feel great again. You can change your physiology, you can change your state instantly. You just have to learn how to do it. So all of these things here are combined all at the same time. So everything that goes through the perceptions, the leap thought generalized through these things here, this happens instantaneously together, and then you have a behavior. That's why, have you ever noticed that people that are prone to anger, that are prone to using their fist in rage, it's because everything goes through this really, really quickly. Something happens in the outside world that they might not like and internally they have made all these decisions in this paradigm with patterns where it says, this thing happens, this equals this. This thing happens, altercation happens, I swing and I knock someone out. I've known so many people like that, especially when they go through a bit of deletion, a bit of distortion through alcohol or other substances. That filter goes through the window. They're no longer operating from a place of values or beliefs or anything like that. They're operating from decisions, paradigms, and patterns because they've repeated it so many times that it's like fused into their nervous system and this happens instantaneously. However, like I said, there is a gap. The moment that this happens, you've got a momentary gap to be able to take a breath and to be able to say, I choose different. I'm going to choose my response in my response ability. It's my ability to respond instead of reacting. How mind-blowing is that now that I've just described the way that our mind works, the way that it gets filtered through our mind and we have our perceptions to thank for that. You have your zero to seven years of what you were modeled, what you soaked in as a little sponge. Did you make all these decisions or were they just thrust upon you? Because I know for myself, they were mainly thrust upon me. And that's why for the majority of my life, I lived like such a victim because that's all I fucking saw in my outside world. Poor me, rot the government, go bankrupt over gambling, alcohol, violence, you know, just all this sort of stuff. That was my childhood. I had some great things, absolutely. But you're pretty aware of the negative things because you want to stay away from the negative things, even though they get imprinted into you. So what we're going to do is we're going to start transforming this. The reason why I brought up in the video about values and beliefs and beliefs being things of certainty, values being things that you hold priority to, these two things here, the reason why they're at the top of that list, is they matter more than anything else. So if you value transformation, having a life that's on your terms, having that fuck yes life, you value transformation over anything else. Having a high value life, being of worth, of service, means that you want to always be the best version of you possible. So I commend you on being here for that. Well done. That's enough for this one. Let's dive into the next one.